Welcome to Mentoring Monday. Today we have with us Rich Reinick. He is a VCU business alum and co-founder of Fahrenheit Advisors. We'll get to hear about his experiences as an entrepreneur, connector, and executive search expert. If you have any questions at any time, um, please put them in the chat. You can send them to the group chat or you can send them to me privately. I'm Kate Burns, the director of the Office of Student Engagement, and we are ready to kick this off. So I'll turn it over to you, Rich. Awesome. We can make this a wellness Monday as well. <laughs> we can all use that, right? We can all we use could. that. Um, mm -hmm. Well, I, I know the pressure's on. I'm pretty sure I saw the brains behind this operation um, log in a few minutes ago. That's my wife, Heather. So I'm pretty sure she's on here and I see Ryan Fisher on here as well. So welcome, Ryan. Um, as Kate just said, I am uh, Rich Ronick. I'm one of the co-founders of Fahrenheit Advisors. We're a, a middle market consulting and advisory firm headquartered. For those of you that have been um, to a brewery, we're in the center of all of them in Scott's edition. So you've probably seen our our building, if you've been in Scott's Edition and you've toured any of the breweries, you've passed our building for sure. So um, I wanted to um, take a few minutes and I'll, I'll roll through a few slides fairly quickly so we can get to some Q&A and just have a conversation. Um, a few months ago, I was asked to, to join a class and, um, and do a lecture to the C-suite class. And it was this semester, I forget exactly when it was, but um, this was the title slide of that presentation, Obstacles and Opportunities. Um, and this is pre-COVID. I just didn't know that it was that timely to call a presentation Obstacles and Opportunities. Um, so, um, you know, a little bit about me. Um, as Kate mentioned, I'm, a, I'm an alum of VCU. I was a, a marketing uh, major at VCU. And my first confession is, as you see in the right, I was supposed to graduate in one year. That was 95. And um, my funny story is I met my wife while I was in school and she bought me my class ring as a gift. And it actually says 1995 on it. And I didn't graduate until 96. So um, the important thing is I ended up graduating um, from a great school. So, uh, and Another interesting fact is I have twin boys. Both of them are freshmen at VCU this year. So having a great time. One in the business school, one in psychology. So um, I was able to convince them what a great institution VCU was. And um, the other interesting fact about these guys is they are in a band um, called Hollywood Cemetery with Ryan Fisher, who is the lead singer and on the call with us right now. Um, you know, one of the things that I thought I'd share is um, uh, something I share with that class, which is, you know, this concept of not fearing failure at all. Um, failure is not the opposite of success. It's, it's really just part of success. And, and to demonstrate this, I thought I'd take just a second and, and talk about a couple of my failures that led me on a path to where I am today. And rest assured, keep calm you are going to absolutely crash and burn at some point in time. Um, it is just a part of the process. Um, and I'm here to tell you that the good comes out of that. Um, and the picture on the right of this plane going down um, is part of my story. So um, I was in uh, the recruiting business and uh, was part of a big national, in fact, international recruiting firm and had a really successful career started. And I was approached by um, an individual that um, uh, asked me to, to help launch a firm. And um, so my first story is really about um, having opportunities that present themselves. And, and at the moment, maybe they don't come together. And I'll talk about that instance in a second. Career Quest, I started um, in about 2000 um, when my wife and I were pregnant with twin boys and uh, it was a great opportunity for me to build a company and um, I had a great successful run until about 2008 and 2009 
And if we remember back to those years, we were in a huge recession. And um, I don't have to tell the folks in the business school what a terrible business plan search and recruiting can be in a down economy. No one hires when the market is off that high. So uh, CareerQuest started to suffer pretty significantly. And I really felt this great sense of failure. You know, I built the company, I'd hired people, I'd grown, I'd moved into bigger office space. I felt like I was on a path of success. And then suddenly it was all sort of yanked away from me. And I didn't really know what to do. And I'll tell you um, that I had this, this piece of advice and that radar in the middle is the thing that I kind of reflect on fairly often, that bad things that happen really are blips on the radar. You know, they seem pretty significant at the time, but ultimately when you reflect back on these things that feel huge, like huge failures, when you reflect back on them, they're really gonna be blips on the radar. And you'll look back and say, gosh, you know what? If that didn't happen, I wouldn't be in the position that I'm in today. And so there are two opportunities that really come to mind. One, as I mentioned, I was on this great path of success in the recruiting industry, and I was approached by an entrepreneur to start a business. And I had to sit out about a year waiting for a non-compete to run out. And I was developing my business plan. And along the path, he was acquired by the parent company and came to me one day and said, you know, unfortunately, we can't move forward. We can't be business partners. And um, you no longer have an income. You don't have a job. We don't have a business to start together. I was crushed. And this was really at the time that Heather and I learned that we were pregnant with twins. Um, I thought, what a huge failure. I had this successful career. And then suddenly, everything was yanked out from underneath of me. Again, I thought, what a huge issue. How am I going to turn this around? And then the next thing that happened to me, I had an opportunity to take that business plan and go to work for the organization that acquired his business and launch their Richmond based operations using their checkbook and learning how to be an entrepreneur under a corporate structure. It gave me the foundation to be an entrepreneur. So without that failure, I wouldn't have had the success of learning how to build that business using their finances. And then, in, um, I started my own business, as I mentioned, um, shortly thereafter, and, uh, and then the Great Recession came, and suddenly, through no fault of my own, just the economic conditions, uh, you know, the business was crashing and burning, as you saw in the plane wreck before. So I had to make some really fast decisions, and I got approached by one of the greatest entrepreneurs in the region, a lady named Karen Adams. She's had multiple successes. And um, she reached out to me and said, you know, I know of your reputation. I know what you've built in the, in the search world. I have an idea. I'd like to talk to you about being business partners. And I struggled with this idea because I was an entrepreneur. I owned 100% of my own business. And suddenly I had an opportunity to go join businesses with a really successful entrepreneur, but I wouldn't own 100% of it. Now, I remind you that this is in 2009 when my business was literally hurling towards the earth on fire. Um, I had really no opportunity to save it. I didn't have any choices, but they were really pretty unclear. This seemed like a huge failure to me. And I remember getting some advice, which you see this picture of a grape and a picture of a watermelon. Um, a good friend of mine, a guy named Dave Fracken, who owns a company called Dominion Payroll Services, another great successful entrepreneur in the market. He and I have been friends for a long time and he sat down with me and he said, you know, Rich, I know that this seems unclear to you right now as you're living this, but you can either have the whole great, your business, or you can join partners with a really successful entrepreneur and grow something much, much larger and have a slice of the watermelon. And that, that comment has really stuck with me. And um, I, I will say that Without those failures, without those transitions, without those things that really hit my radar, I wouldn't be a co-founder of Fahrenheit. And I will tell you that um, having a slice of this particular watermelon has been far greater in many ways. You know, having business partners um, has taught me a ton 
um, you know, Fahrenheit has been, um, you know, an interesting and, and incredible venture for us to build. Um, and I'll tell you, I sat down with my business partner, um, Keith Middleton. Uh, Karen was our angel investor. We bought Karen and her um, angel group out in about year two. But Keith and I had never met before, really. Uh, we had met at one networking event for about 30 minutes. And then we sat down over two beers and a plate of wings one day, um, about an hour and a half meeting. And the discussion wasn't necessarily what are we going to build in Fahrenheit? It wasn't the services. It was about the who are we as people. And the thing that came out of that is these core principles. Integrity, flexibility, accountability, community, and being entrepreneurial. It's these things that really guide who we are as people, who we are as an organization, and I think the things that have made Fahrenheit a success in our market. Um, and over the last 10 years, we just celebrated our, our 10th anniversary. Um, and I won't bore you with the specifics, but um, this slide I think shows you that, you know, in 2009, I had a business that I owned 100% of, uh, was really proud of, but I suddenly found myself in a position where I felt like a huge failure. And then I had an opportunity immediately to start another business with partners and build something that has become significantly larger and more successful than anything I could have envisioned on my own. Um, in the bottom left, we started as a company called Fahrenheit Finance. We solely focused really on accounting and finance, um, consulting services. And over the last 10 years, we've continued to broaden our services from accounting and finance consulting to HR, to search services, to helping companies find their path forward. We've rebranded um, some of the most proud things that we've accomplished uh, being on the best places to work. I think now seven, maybe eight years in a row. Um, a couple of years ago, we won the Greater Richmond Chamber um, Impact Award. Um, it's a, it, it is a, a feather in the cap for our entire team. Um, it was a huge undertaking and um, it is really something that um, we, um, we set out to do. And, um, and it's not to win the award, it's to create the culture that makes an impact in our community and is seen by our community. And um, that award definitely um, um, showcases that. And then we've been on the um, top places to work for Richmond um, Times Dispatch the last couple of years as well. Um, and I will say, you know, we've got about um, 70 or so employees. We're headquartered here in Richmond. We've got folks in Raleigh, Durham, Char uh, Charlottesville, Roanoke. We've got a team out in Phoenix, Arizona. Um, we've continued to scale and grow over these 10 years. And um, in Q1, things were absolutely on a rocket ship. We were doing very, very well. And then suddenly we find ourselves, um, you know, facing this COVID crisis, an international pandemic that absolutely no one saw. And literally, we went from one day feeling like, gosh, we need to learn how to wash our hands better, to almost overnight realizing that this is going to have a, a really significant impact on all of us. Um, and then over the last five weeks, the, the evolution of this has been at such a rapid pace. It's, it's um, almost hard to fathom. Uh, but over these 10 years, we've almost trained for this. We've, we've pivoted so many times, adding different kinds of services and ebbing and flowing with market realities that suddenly when COVID hit, we knew how to react. Um, and if you reflect back to that slide that talks about our core principles, being entrepreneurial being one of them puts us in a position to think differently when we're faced with something like the COVID crisis. Um, and then uh, my sort of final slide here, and then we'll open up for some questions and just general conversation is, you know, there are three things and they're written on walls um, in my office. We've got whiteboard walls, folks. Um, we're not just writing on walls. Um, we do write on a few walls. Uh, but there are three things. Be entrepreneurial, take risks, and have faith. Um, and, and these are not easy things to keep top of mind on a daily basis, particularly as an entrepreneur running a business. Um, you know, we look at this organization, um, Keith says this all the time, almost as a science experiment. You know, we try 
a lot of different things and we try and fail as fast as we can at some of them so that we can move on to the next thing that's gonna be successful. And that takes this entire organization having this entrepreneurial trait within their DNA. And you have to be able to take risk. If you're not a risk taker, it's hard to be successful within our firm. So if you can be entrepreneurial and take risk, it really sets you up with the DNA to be successful in our organization. And I think those are traits to be successful as entrepreneurs. And the thing I think that I think keeps me grounded um, and our firm grounded is this concept of having faith. Um, it's never as good as it seems and it's never as bad as it seems. Um, it's often very hard to keep that in perspective. Uh, so having faith is critical, particularly when you're faced with a, uh, a time of crisis. You know, it's uncertain what's around the corner. It's uncertain when business is going to come back. It's uncertain the impact it's going to have on our economy um, and what it's going to have on us individually. But having faith that it is going to come back and that things are going to be good and that even through all of these obstacles, there are opportunities for all of us. You know, I, I think about the last five or six weeks and the things that we've learned as organizations that we will implement to be better when we come out of this. You know, you go into this knowing what a negative thing that this, this crisis has been, but what are all the things that we've learned? One thing for sure, we've learned how to meet virtually. We've learned how to use technology. And because of some of this, we've learned the efficiencies and inefficiencies that we had in our business and the things that we can do better as business people. So I think if there's something you're going to write on the wall, write, be entrepreneurial, take risk, and have faith. And with that, um, I'll stop there. Kate, do you want me to stop my share? Is that the easiest thing to do? I think, I think so. And what we can do is um, share your website and your contact info when the recording goes out in case folks want to reach out to you. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for that great overview and giving some of your insights on our current situation and, and the ways that you've worked through in the past. Um, so we'll open it up to questions right now. Again, you can type your questions in the chat, um, send them to everyone or to me privately. And in the meantime, we do have one question that's already come in. So it has to do with failure. You mentioned failure a few times. Um, and in hindsight, having that value of being able to look back and failure being a blip on the radar. Yep. Um, what about when you're in the midst of failure right now? So when, you're feel, when you feel like you're currently in it, um, what's your advice on how you get out of it so you can say, okay, great, now I'm on the other side looking back? Yeah, boy, it's a tough one. It really is a tough one. You know, I, I feel really blessed. You know, I've, I've run a business on my own and I've had a business partner. And being able to look across to another office and be able to be grounded by somebody else that's feeling a lot of the same kinds of things and talk through it, um, you know, it's rare that both myself and my business partner are all the way up or all the way down at the same time. So it, it, I think, uh, you know, a key for me is to find that other person in your life where you can just air it out and, um, and accept just some, some feedback that it's going to be okay. Um, it's hard to accept that feedback when you're in the midst of failure. It's, it's, um, it's difficult to see your way through issues on your own. And I think being able to have an outlet and somebody that you feel confident in to just talk things through. And sometimes it literally is just talking it through. Okay, thanks. Um, and this one really relates very well. Um, so this person is saying, um, 
that a lot of people are overwhelmed right now, it seems like with the magnitude of unknowns and uncertainty that you mentioned. Um, can you give us one tip on how to shrink the change and take baby steps forward, even when the future is really always unknown? <laughs> yeah, we've never had a crystal ball, right? Um, you know, I, I think, um, you know, one of the things that I have seen is uh, people grabbing bits of information and trying to make decisions without first stepping back and looking at the entire picture. So, you know, I, I catch myself doing this fairly often. You know, you, you, sort of, um, you sort of get a body of information together that is limited and start to run. Um, particularly my DNA is um, to make decisions and to move. Um, I think it is often best to take one step back and to reflect on, you know, what are the other possibilities? And um, so I think that's one of the things that we should be very reflective of right now, that all the information that's available to us um, needs to be on the table. Don't just take the one, the one piece that you're hearing as, um, as the truth. Thanks. Um, Okay, so this has to do with the context of the semester. We have um, exams starting in just a little bit, and some of our senior students will be graduating at the end of next week. So given our current situation, what tips do you have for students who are still in a job search or have had an offer that's been rescinded or a start date that's been postponed? You know, I... Here's a great example of what we were just talking about. I, I mean, clearly unemployment is, is um, rising at a really rapid pace. Um, I'm not sure exactly what is totally in, um, included in that unemployment number. I, I mean, you see um, entertainment, um, restaurants, um, there's some healthcare related unemployment because elective surgeries are, are down. So there is a block of unemployment that um, rose very quickly with very affected industries. I haven't seen a particular rise here of um, professional unemployment. I, I have seen an immediate sort of initial pullback um, on hiring over the first four or five weeks. Um, however, I'd say last week in, in Part of our firm, our search practice, is a great leading indicator of what's happening in the economy. So when companies are hiring us to help them find and hire great talent, the market is still um, responding well. We saw an uptick in those kinds of opportunities over the last week and a half. Um, so I would suggest that we'll start to see um, maybe some unemployment numbers start to level off because those um, highly affected industries have already seen their biggest impact. Um, but for the actions you can take, I think are very similar to the actions you would have taken even um, two months ago. Um, staying connected to people. You know, my greatest advice to the students that I've interacted with is how do you build your network as broad as you possibly can? You know, um, as students at VCU, you're so connected to the business community and people here in this region want to help, particularly students at VCU. So how fast and how connected can you get while you're at school? That's my greatest, I think the greatest gift you can give yourself is build a LinkedIn profile that gets folks interested in your profile. Showcase what you're doing to make yourself a valuable asset when you leave VCU. Start that as a student. Start reaching out to people. Start going to business-related kinds of networking events. Start asking for meetings. You know, and even in this crisis, don't stop that. You know, ask for 15 minutes on a, on a web call. Um, build those connections. These are the most valuable things you can be doing to build your career at the beginning. That's absolutely no different than what I would have said two months ago, is build your network. Okay, great. 
And yeah, and we have the, our alumni, VCU alumni network on LinkedIn. We have BizConnect through the Office of Student Engagement. Um, anyone on this call right now can reach out to me um, or the office, osc at vcu.edu and get started with that. And we can help you if you're like, ah, I'd love to build my network, but I'm not sure how, we're here to help. Um, and okay, so we have another question that's come in um, that relates to this uncertainty and particularly internships. So um, getting connected and building a network is one really vital part of um, career development and professional identity. Um, another really strong piece is, you know, what's on the resume. So that tangible experience, um, the transferable skills that come through that. And um, we've heard, we heard last week that from Brian Rose in Career Services that there are a number of companies who are um, not canceling, but transferring to virtual internships. Um, if a student is faced with loss of an internship um, or, you know, it's not no longer the whole summer, but now it's limited down to a week or two, uh, do you have ex examples or advice on how they can still gain experience this summer? Yeah, you know, hey, boy, that's a tough one. I, you know, I feel for the folks that are, are immediately affected by companies pulling back. And, and I, I think there is a fast reaction by lots of organizations. Some are clearly in difficult positions and um, facing some very certain market realities to their business. And so they have to pull back. I think some of it is a reaction to the what if scenarios. Um, you know, I think what you just said is gaining the experience is really what you're looking for. So um, there are a lot of opportunities in Richmond, I think, to start to um, get involved in the business community. Um, things like Startup Virginia, um, I think Ryan's gotten connected to Startup Virginia on a few occasions, um, but I'd be looking for communities like that where you have a broad set of organizations that may need the talent that you bring to the table, um, but it's not just focused on one organization. So I think there's probably communities like that you can get involved in. Um, I go back to my how fast and how broad of a network can you build and offer up pieces of your time. Again, it's the experience and the network that's the most valuable, not so much the compensation piece. I understand that we all have to eat, um, but at this stage of the game, what we're trying to do in an internship is to find the opportunity to get real world experience and a real network. And if you can get compensated in addition to that, that's a bonus, particularly right now in the middle of a crisis. So how valuable might you be considered if suddenly you find yourself filling a gap, even if it's unpaid, that's highly valuable. That leads to, I think, great things in the future. So, um, you know, companies are hurting to get things done in a way that um, uh, will preserve cash. So if you can offer up skills, um, and boy, who better to do virtual related work than you know the folks that know how to use technology the best and that's a great piece of advice so even if you you know that you are in a position where you need a part-time job that may seem unrelated to your career path offering up your talent and your skills as a volunteer still gets you that experience and Absolutely. broadens your network and connections and so that's a really great tip thank you absolutely so we're right up on our time. I feel like we could keep on going. Um, there's one more question here that I think is a nice end point, and I'm gonna adapt it a little bit. Um, it's asked by Willis Lamb, and Willis, feel free to reach out to Rich um, for your specific question. Um, this has to do with building morale and culture. And so as we all move forward, um, whether it's an individual or whether we're on a team, what would be your words of encouragement or advice for keeping that culture and morale up as we continue to move forward? Boy, you know, I could tell you what we're doing uh, at Fahrenheit 
to keep morale up. Um, you know, it, it comes down to communication. You know, we have been communicating on a daily basis across our organization. So every day a message goes out to the team um, to keep them updated on the most relevant things that are happening on any given day. Sometimes it's just, hey, don't forget it's Monday. <laughs> um, but, you know, sometimes it's here's the latest regulations that are coming out and here's how it impacts you and in, in, in our firm. Um, but every day we're communicating. Um, we've had several full team meetings. Everybody gets on. Um, Keith and I address the team with, along with our leadership team, um, answering questions. There's just a tremendous amount of angst and uncertainty in addressing it head on, um, being um, extremely candid and open and honest, I think is the thing that people want. You know, they can deal with the the hard things that may come if, if you're just open and honest about the things that might happen. Um, so we've tried to be as clear as we can possibly be as an organization and, um, and provide that on a daily basis. Thank you, Rich. Um, this has been full of great advice and nuggets of wisdom and um, some really great highlights on your past experiences and what you've learned from your journey. Um, so thank you again for joining us for our last Mentoring Monday of the semester. Um, if you, you know, by signing up by, with this link, you'll get the automatic recording sent to you so you can feel free and go back and watch again. We'll also include some resources that Rich mentioned um, in the, the recording YouTube video in the description. So feel free to revisit. And we hope to see you tune in on Wednesday for Dean Ed Greer with our last Wellness Wednesday. Um, so thank you again. Have a great rest of your day, great rest of your week. And uh, Rich, thanks so much. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it.